Welcome back. In this module, we are going to take a look at an investment or a loan that involves multiple cash flows. So in the past, we always have just one single present value and you're finding the future value. Or you have a future value and you're finding the present value. In this example, we're going to take a look at when an investment actually occurs over multiple years. So again, we're introducing more real life situations into our problems. So let's say we have this um, investment or you have this saving plan where you're going to put $100 into your account in one year and then $300 in the same account in three years. Question is how much would you have in the account total at the end of five years if you're earning an 8% interest on this account? So let's draw this problem on our timeline. So this invest entire investment horizon lasts five years. So we're going to map out the entire five years. Our first cash deposit occurred $100 occur in year one. So I'll put $100 here. And our second deposit occur in year three. So that's $300 in year three. How much money do we have altogether after five years? So we can do it in a number of ways. Um, the most intuitive way is the one that I'll go through first. So you have 8%. So after one year, from year one to year two, the $100 will earn 8%. So at the end of that year, the $100 will grow to $108. And then we'll earn another 8% at the end of year two. So between year two and year three, the $108 will earn interest again. So by the end of year three, this 100, uh, $108 will have grown to $116.64. Altogether, at the end of year three, since you also put in an additional $300, you have $416.64. Okay. You continue to earn 8% in interest. So at the end of year four, the $416.64 will increase by 8% again. So that will grow to $449.97. And then finally, they'll earn another 8% to reach year five. Altogether, at the end of year five, you will have total $485.97. So this is the most intuitive way to look at this problem. Uh, unfortunately, this is the mo not the most practical way to this solve this problem because you have to accumulate interest one year at a time. So once you understand the basic concept, we're going to look at faster way to solve this problem. So a lot of what you'll see in the next um, couple of slides is what are, what, what are the fastest ways to solve a particular problem. So here's the same timeline that we have seen before. One strategy to solve this problem faster is to look at the two cash, the two cash flows separately. So we have the first cash flow is $100 that we receive in year one, and we're going to leave this money in the bank until year five. Between year one and year five, there are a total of four years. So one, two, three, four. You can also see that five minus one is four. So we will leave the $100 in the bank for four years, earning an interest rate of 8%. We want to find out how much that would have grown to at the end of um, that investment horizon. So for the $100, the investment horizon is actually four. And the $100 is our present value. Uh, of course, our interest rate is 8%. And we want to compute how much it will have grown to at the end of year five. So we are computing the future value. So the future value here is future value at the end of year five. And you will get $136.05. Next, let's take a look at the $300 that you put in in year three. Again, you're going to put $300 in the bank. You're going to lift that until the end of year five. In between year three and year five, there are two years, one, two. So again, if you subtract five from three, you get two. 
So the investment horizon for the $300 is just two years. So the present value for this $300 is, is uh, again, $300 is present value. Invested for two years. Once again, we are earning 8%. And we want to find out how much that will grow to at the end of year five. So we're computing the future value for year five. And the $300 earning two years worth of interest will have grown to $349.92. When you add these two together, you'll find that the total future value is $485.97. Now, instead of using the financial calculator, you can also use the formula. So the formula for computing future value is we take the present value. So again, we'll start with $100. So $100 times 1 plus the interest rate. So the interest rate is 8%. So 1 plus 8% invest, invest raise to the investment period. So the $100, remember, we invest in year one to year five. So there's total of four years. So you get exactly the same answer. The same is true for year three of uh, where you put in $300. So we put in $300 in year three, earning 8%, so times one plus 8%. And between year three and year five, there are two years. So our future value turns out to be $349.92. So, so you can compute a future value using the formula, or you can compute a future value using the financial calculator. We add these two together, that once again will give us our total future value, which is $485.97. So using this two approach will get the answer faster than bringing um, computing interest one year at a time and compounding it forward. So this is a shortcut, but the basic um, concept remains the same. So let's take a look at another example. So practice is very important. Uh, in this example, we have more than just two cash flows. We have multiple cash flows. But instead of computing the future value, we are asked to find the present value in this example. So let's take a look at how we will approach this problem. In addition to cash flow, we also need to know discount rate. So let's say other investment has that has similar risk will offer a 12% per year in return. So remember that return and interest rate serve the same function here. So in here, the interest rate or the discount rate or the return is 12%. The question asks us, what is the value of this investment today? So two things that I want to point out here. One is when you hear the term value without any qualifier, that's usually referred to the present value. In addition, since it is implied today, that further confirms that we are asked to find the present value. So to approach this problem first, let's take a look at, let's put down the cash flow on a timeline that help us understand what this problem, um, what the cash flow for this investment looks like. So the investment horizon lasted a total of four years. And in year one, we would expect to generate $200. In year two, it will be $400. In year three is $600, and in year four is $800. And the interest rate is 12%. So that's the basic information we need to solve this problem. So we can solve this problem in a number of ways. First is we can discount each cash flow one at a time. So similar to what we have done with future value, the present value approach is essentially the same, except of course here the $200 represents the future value and the interest rate is 12%. Now between year one and discounted it back to today, that's only one period. So N for the $200 will be one and we are computing the present value. So the present value turns out to be $178.57. So again, pause the video each time we are going through a calculation to confirm that you know how to do this. Uh, next, we have the $400, uh, the $400 in year two, and we can solve that in a similar way. 
the $400 will be our future value. But since this occurred in year two, and we are bringing it all back to today, so between year two and today, we have two years. So n is two in this case. The interest rate r remains the same. Same r is twelve percent, and we are computing the present value. Okay, and that should turn out to be three hundred and eighteen dollars and eighty-eight cents. We can do the same thing for the remaining cash flow. So the six hundred dollars will be the future value, since this occur in year three. Our n will be three. Once again, the interest rate is 12%, so I is 12, and we are computing the present value. And that should turn out to $427.07. .07. Lastly, do the same thing for, year, for $800 in year four. N is four, and we have the rest of the information. We need to compute the present value. And when we have all this present value together, so one of the important thing is that before we compute the present value, we cannot add them together. Once they are all the same value at the same point in time, we can add them together. So we have our total present value of all this four cash flow is $1,432.93. So what does this, this $1,432.93 represent? Let's take a look. Remember the assumption is that you can earn 12% in interest. And this is, some, this is the alternative investment. So let's say we start with investing $1,432.93 in something else. After one year, so we put this in in year zero. At the end of year one, since we're earning 12%, that money will grow. In fact, it will grow to, I'm gonna let you pause the video and, and, and find the answer to that. So $1,432.93 earning 12% for one year, it will grow to $1,605. Okay. Let's assume that you, you want to be able to spend $200. That's why you invest in this investment. So you take out $200 and you will have $1,405 to invest for the next years. Again, we earn 12% for year two, 12% on $1,405 will give you a total of $1,573. Once again, you want to spend $400. So we'll take out $400. You have $1,173 left in your account Earning, once again, 12%. So at 12% after one year, the $1,173 will grow to $1,314. This time you're gonna take out $600 to spend and you will be left with $1,000. $714. And again, the $714 will earn 12% in interest. And at the end of the year, you will have $800 left, which you can take out to spend. And you'll get back to the original problem. So what that means is if you are able to earn 12%, that's a very important assumption. If you're able to earn 12%, you'll be able to put your money, which is $1,432.93, anywhere else earning 12% and be able to generate the same cash flow stream, $200, $600, and $800 as this investment. So what that means is at an interest rate of 12%, having $1,432.93 today is the same as having a stream of cash flow of two, four, six, eight hundred dollars over the next four years. So that is why the present value is considered the intrinsic value of this cash flows in the, um, that you'll receive in the future. And that is the most important concept of multiple cash flows. 
Because multiple cash flow is the most common um, calculation in finance, uh, there is a special function in your financial calculator that help you solve this problem. Um, the solution strategy we will uh, show is based on the Texas Instrument Calculator. So the function we will use is the cash flow function. So once again, if you have not uh, recorded this, this is a good idea to put this on your formula sheet. Um, be sure to use clear work to clear all the cash flow register. And just like the other functions we have seen, you need to use um, enter after each cash flow. So enter the cash flow for each year. And then, um, but something very important, CFO stands for cash flow in year zero. And then in future years, the cash flow will have different number. And so C here stands for cash or cash flow. So 0, 01, 0, 02, 03 will be cash flow in year one, two, three, etc. Um, you need to use the down arrow key. Um, and now the register is designated by the, the letter F. F is for how many times. So if you receive the same cash flow amount for more than once, you could use this. Um, we'll demonstrate that through an example. The solution we want is located in MPV. MPV stands for net present value. Um, you want to enter the interest rate. Again, since we're using the financial calculator, we'll enter it as a percent. Um, I stands for interest rate. And you need to scroll down using the arrow key to access MPV and then press compute. So let's take a look at the example we have and we'll solve this together. So here's your calculator. With to access the cash flows, we'll just press the cash flow register right here. A good idea to clear the register at this point. So to clear the register, we start with second function, clear work. Now this will all be clear. And cash flow in year zero, in this problem, we, have, we do not have any cash flow in year zero. So we'll just leave that. We'll scroll down using the down arrow key. His cash flow in year one, or the first cash flow amount is $200. So 200. Once again, we have to press enter and notice that the number of decimal places will register when your, when your calculator registers the information. So we use down arrow key, we receive $200. F01 asks us how many times we get $200. We only have one entry of $200, so we'll keep that at one. We scroll down again, you give us cash flow in year two. So cash flow in year two is $400. So So 400, enter. And again, we only have $400 once. So let's go down again. This time we have $600, 600, enter. Scroll down, again, we have only $600 once. And lastly, we have $800, so enter. Now we have all the cash flow. You can also double check your work. So you only get $800 once. You can scroll back up to check that all the information is entered properly. To solve this problem, we go to the MPV function. So MPV, interest rate, interest rate is 12%. So we go 12, enter. And you can scroll down. This is MPV. Notice it, it prompts you to hit the compute key. So all we have to do is press compute. And of course, you get the same answer that you have before. The present value is $1,432.93. As uh, so you can see, using the financial calculator is a much, much faster way to solve pre uh, present value problem when you have multiple cash flows. Uh, for the future value of multiple cash flow, the base model uh, financial calculator does not um, have that function. Um, the reason for that is is a much less common form of calculation. So you can use the calculator as a shortcut to get net present value. Uh, for future value, you have to find the future value for each cash flow individually, and then you can add it up. Here are a couple examples to help you check your knowledge. So pause the um, video now and see if you can find 
the future value for this investment. So the problem is that you want to deposit $100 in year one, $200 in year two, and $300 in year three, your bank pays an interest rate every 6-7% every year. Question is, how much money would you have in year three? Did you, did, does your timeline look like this? Okay, so remember that to compute future value, we have to solve one cash flow at a time. So you have to find the future value of the $100, you have to find the future value of the $200, and then you have to add it up. Did you get $114.49 for the $100 and $214 for $200? Okay, and the $300, we just get that in year three. We just put that in the bank, so we didn't have any chance to earn any interest. So the $300 remains $300 in year three, and our total future value is $628.49. Great. Now let's see if you can solve the next problem. Now that we know what the total future value is, let's take a look at what the total present value is. Now to, to find the total present value, you can discount them back one cash flow at a time and then add them up, or you can use the present value or cash flow function. So I'll let you um, try that, so pause the video. So we start with cash flow, and we want to use second function clear work to clear our register. Again, this problem we don't have any cash flow in year zero. We'll proceed to cash flow in year one, and that's one hundred dollars. We'll press enter. For we only get one hundred dollars one year, so we'll go down to year two. So two hundred dollars. Enter. We get two hundred dollars one time, so we'll go down one more time. Three hundred. Press enter. For one for one one for once, and next we go to NPV. Our interest rate is seven percent, so seven. Enter, and we are computing the present value. Present value turns out to be five hundred and thirteen dollars and three cents. So finally, we ask, well, how are these cash flow related? We can have $100 in year one, $200 in year two, $300 in year three. We have the future value and we have the present value. Um, so let's take a look at the relationship between the present value and the future value first. So remember that the present value is $513.03. So let's say we receive that today, and we can invest this for three years at 7%. What will we have? So start with clearing our time value of money register. So second function, clear TVM. With $513.03 is our present value. So $513.03. That's our present value. 7% is our interest rate, and the investment horizon is three years, so 3N, and we want to compute the future value. Remember that number, $628.48? That's exactly the same as the future value that we computed for the cash flow of $100 in one year, $200 in two years, and $300 in three years. What that means is that all these cash flow, 500 are uh, equivalent. So you, as an investor, you are just as well off between any of these two options, these three options. So in other words, if someone offered you an investment for $628.48 or a cash flow stream of $100, $200, both of them are worth $513.03 today. So all three cash flows are the same, and they are related as long as the interest rate is 7%. So that's very important. The connection between those three cash flows is the interest rate of 7%. One more example to test and your knowledge. So here we have an investment option. So pause the video and read the question carefully, and see if you can answer this question on your own. So to solve this problem, we start with the timeline. We have an investment that lasts two years. This investment will give you $40 in year one, 
and $75 in year two. So, and the interest rate, the required return is 15%. So to compare the value of this investment, to compute the value of this investment, the best way is to find the present value. So let's use the cash flow register again. Remember, use second function, clear work. We have a cash flow in year one of $40 for one period, and cash flow of $75 in year two, again, for one period. And we have an interest rate, so let's go to the MPV to compute the net present value. We have an interest rate of 15%, and that gives us a present value of $91.49. I hope that's what you get as well. So remember what the meaning of this present value is. This, the meaning of this present value is that it tells us that if we invest $91.49 today, we'll be, and our return is 15%, we'll be able to generate an equal cash flow of $40 in year one and $75 in year two. So in other words, this investment is worth to us today, is worth $91.49 today. Someone is asking you to invest $100 for this investment. Should you take it? Would you pay $100 for something that is worth $91.49? Of course, the answer is, not, is no. So that is how you can evaluate whether or not an investment is worthwhile undertaking. This concludes our discussion on multiple cash flows, both for present value and future value.